Recording in progress. All right. So, when I woke up in the trauma unit, it was 2008, and by early, the very beginning of 2009, I had moved my family under the one house and split up my mother with her man that I had paid for being involved with intelligence agents who had visited me from the same street and so on and so forth after everything had ensued and I had shut down about half my operations. And I thought I was going to be able to do a 45 minute intro and a 45 minute presentation. Obviously that was way off, but long story short would be that I had a handyman company that I used as cover and I definitely didn't use to launder money. And basically I had a lot of keys and I would do maintenance on various, house, various houses and properties and whatever else was going on there wasn't any of my business. Understand? So I was doing maintenance on one property <laughs> one day and Something I didn't mention is this BMW X5 that's about to show. Was the Senator's daughter's car. The Senator, whose office was at the top of the SunTrust building. Yeah, that Senator. Just the vegetation room. You can see we would, this is low tech. I really, this is the police video. I didn't take pictures other than that first house. This was low tech because it was way out in the country. I shut down the high tech places that need yeah. maintenance. This was low tech. Got Paco come out and do the fingerprints. Remember, he did the fingerprints. So this is the vegetative room you see inside of a house. I would frame up, put a pond liner in the bottom. There's an inline AC, I've got everything on timers, blah, 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 blah. High temperature shutoffs even for the lights just in case if it gets too hot so the light shuts off so nothing can burn, etc. Everything going through a fan, going through negative pressure through carbon filter and ozone generator. Blah, 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 blah. Nice yes, Yeah. Maxi crop. Maxi crop. Oh, we don't want to see that code is in it. Tavex suits. Tavex suits. Tavex suits. Tavex suits, motherfucker. Windows all blacked out. Windows all blacked out because I'm a country boy. All right. Hold on a second. Jimmy, open it up for me. Open it up for me. Hey, hey there. Dum 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 how did I get the video? Represented myself after being set up. <laughs> okay, mostly sour diesel. We were mono cropping. Needless to say, this is a decent little operation. Low tech, but still nice. Do y'all want to see this shit? Throw that play. We have about three minutes left. I don't know if we'll watch all three. Have you already called Paco? No, I have not yet. Have you called Paco? Not yet. Call Paco, motherfucker. Get them prints. And get them motherfucking people, because i got to move this product. Because I'm a dirty drug test, 23rd drug task force operator that has been on channel I-4 Investigates. I-4 Investigates. I'll take this one panel down. I would take this one panel down, because I'm a bitch. Hey, by the way, I suck dick. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Okay, different trash for the marijuana and for the trash. That way you could leave with the trash. Buckets. Just come in the water. We're just coming to water. Air, air, water filtration system. We got the shower. We got the steaks. We got the toilet back there if you got poop. <laughs> Nothing back here. Nothing back here.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Just listen. We'll get it out. It's over our cycle of football. That they rent this trailer. There's no actual evidence anybody lives here. No evidence anybody no lives there. Cabinets. No There's evidence no anybody lives there. Sabre Diesel, 420, 2009. Okay, so. So what happened there? What happened there, my friend? Let's see. Here is the search warrant for there. Sorry, I had to redact a lot. Don't inconvenience me anymore. People. Okay. To make an immediate search of the persons, premises, building, outbuildings, garages, vehicles, sheds, trash cans, garbage cans, or garbage bags, computers, and only electronic devices that may use be stored electronic images and data, but not including limited to laptop computers, desktop, phones, cell phones. Okay. 23rd Judicial Drug Task Force. Dirty motherfuckers. So. Another one. Here's Fairview. There's a few. Search warrant was secured for the home, but. A marijuana grow house, but. Extensive equipment, but. GPS, but. Oh, we'll get into the bullshit about the GPS. Just a second. Here we go. At one of these places. Ruger P345, sure. 45 caliber, sure. Uh, 45 caliber brown, sure. Upper portion, 50 caliber AR-15, which is made at the Radford Army Arsenal. Can seize an engine block and one. You bend the lips out on a normal 22-223 clip. You bend them out, and then the 5-0 is single stack to where the 223 stagger. Yeah. You think I'm fucking around? I never was, but I don't need guns. Address listed in the GPS device. Here's what you need to understand is that this was all some bullshit. I was just a handyman. And what they did was, and we found through electronic forensic discovery, because I'm no bitch, that there was timestamps of all the addresses in the GPS that were entered after it was seized. Do you think I would allow addresses to be entered in a GPS? Are you fucking kidding me? The fuck I look like? Pinch me. Pinch me. Address is listed in the GPS. Dixon. Fairview. Fairview. Nashville. Antioch. There were, uh, these are, these, there are search warrants served on these five. At least. I don't want to tell y'all. <laughs> there were other previous addresses found in the GPS device, and they were given to Metro Vice to investigate. The addresses listed above were the last five locations on the same day of the search warrant. Oh, except for they were all entered in there after the search warrant. Oh, we found that out. On 2009, Agent Blot went to Blot address to interview Blot. When agents pulled onto the driveway, agents noticed the truck Blot, Blot, knocked on the door, but no one would answer the door. End of report. Blot, bitch, suck. Now, moving on. Motion to, in behalf of the state of Tennessee, to increase defendant's bond. The state, of, the state moves this court to make an order, one, finding the defendant is a flight risk to increase or revoke the defendant's bond. Guess what? I had my bond revoked, and I had to stay imprisoned. During the first search warrant, because there was many, I don't know how many total, maybe nine, um, during the first search warrant, in Blatt, Agent Blatt seized a key ring, Several house keys, key ring, key to each of the block houses. Oh, but did, 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 did. you forget that it was not specifically mentioned on the warrant. And when they got to that first house, what happened was they could not make entry. So what they did was they arrested me and seized my keys and proceeded to open the door with my keys. Now, if they broke the door, it would be okay. But they didn't. What happened was they seized my keys, and when they actually used my keys to open the door, at that point, they didn't have legitimate cause yet to have arrested me or seized my keys, and it wasn't on the search warrant specifically. So what that means is it was a legal search and seizure to seize my keys. 
And then anything that stems from that is what's called fruit of the poisonous tree. And you can look up these legal doctrines. This is very sound. Now, what did that mean? Oh, yes, that I'm going to beat the case. What did they find? There was many search warrants, like I said. They found laptops, cell phones, many. Here's the BMW with the seizure form for 50 pounds of marijuana. This was the senator's daughter's car. There was actually not even one pound of marijuana, so I never understood this. But needless to say, that was swept under the rug. Oh, by the way, they decided to get someone to write statements against me. Someone whose father worked at the Radford Army Arsenal that made the 50 caliber AR-15 uppers that we had. Which are pretty sweet. I, bitch-faced bitch, was contacted by Gray several months ago. He came to me with a solution to fix my money problems. He told me that if I let him store something in my empty bedrooms, that he would pay me a substantial amount of money. I hesitated, and he said that it would be, it would make plenty of money and not to worry. A month later, I told him okay. Gray and his friend, blank, came over and set up the operations. Gray came over every two to three days, blank, 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 was always instructed to leave. I was always instructed to leave when he came over. This went on for about two to three months, and then Gray came and took blank and gave me blank. Gray made mention of other houses. Blank had a house in Dixon, Tennessee, and blank a house in Antioch. Blank, I didn't feel comfortable about it. Told him no. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. I get it. I get it. This is the last time I wanted it out of my house for fear of my freedom and safety. Then on blank, the police came. And they found the blank that blank and blank had put in my bedroom. They also found the handgun Gray had given me for protection. And then afterwards, when I was going to get out of it for illegal search and seizure, this came edited with a star added on it, with this star added right here, and it said, Gray also mentioned he made about this much money and that he gave the money to his mom to hold, and they charged my mother with conspiracy on that alone. Obviously, is a tactic to get me to buckle. I buckled at first. I couldn't let my mom get charged. What the fuck a guy do I look like? Look, 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 look. I know this mask is a little bit ugly. But, baby, I'm a real motherfucker. You think I'd let my mama get charged? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> so, what happens is, after a while, you file a motion to discovery as the defense, and you're supposed to get all the evidence they have against you, and supposedly it was a citizen's complaint of suspicious activity, which is an anonymous complaint, which basically fit with them burning me after being pissed off since I fucked all their men up for trying to kill a fucking stripper who gave a politician an STD when they shouldn't have been fucking with that in the first place. Stupid motherfuckers. They got worse, though, don't worry. Guess what? They tried to retrieve fingerprints. Paco couldn't get them. They were unable to retrieve any of the scene because I'm in them Tyvek suits and I'm too slick. And then Agent Boom bagged up some items to be sent to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation to try to retrieve fingerprints from them items. But guess what? Undefeated. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that, but they couldn't get fingerprints. Too disciplined. You don't think I know what a sterile protocol is, you stupid fucks? This is not shit. Ba 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 ba. Unable to retrieve fingerprints. Unable, okay? Unable. Don't even with me. Oh, yes. I have the original iPhone, which was, what, is this 2009? I have the original iPhone, some other things. Yes, I got all the evidence that I had, and I do have certain 
messages that are very important. Now listen, what happened was, since I did file a guilty plea, since they charged me and they charged my mother, when they charged my mother, or threatened to charge my mother, I filed a guilty plea. But then it was time to remove the guilty plea. Because the defendant pled guilty to a charge that now, with a better understanding of the law, as well as the charge itself, realizes he is not guilty of. The defendant entered the guilty plea due to coercion and fear. The, the gross misrepresentations was made by the prosecutor, which heavily influenced the defendant to accept the plea agreement. There is a sculptory evidence, which means evidence that proved I was innocent, that the district attorney's office has failed to comply and distribute to the defendant pursuant to the discovery request. The discovery is where you should get all the evidence against you, or evidence period in the case, and if it is exculpatory, meaning proves your innocence, it needs to be released, obviously. Brady v. Maryland, 1963. It's failing to comply with other requests specified in the discovery request. The defendant met with the district attorney's arrest as agreed upon, because I agreed to meet with them and tell them what I knew, which, by the way, when I met with them, I told them, I'm fucking innocent, and y'all are fucked up for doing this. <laughs> so I'm fucked up. Okay. So, they met with the district attorneys, as agreed upon, at which time... The district attorney's office expanded the range of testimony that he agreed to give under oath to things that I literally couldn't give because I can't give testimony if it's not true. And all I knew was I didn't know anything about it and I wasn't guilty. I was just a handyman that did his job and didn't pay attention to more, which is how I kept my job as a handyman. And anything is none of my business and I don't give a shit about marijuana or crooked cops. Now... The defendant entered the plea agreement unintelligibly pertaining to the reasons he was accepting, unknowingly of the exact conditions of the plea, the rights he was giving up, reneged on the agreement, and with the understanding that in an open-ended plea, which is what they claim, this was an open-ended verbal plea, this was a small Masonic town of bullshit, let me tell you, and the Royal Jesters orchestrated this. And if you look up the Royal Jesters, and I can supply information, you will see the human trafficking that they were involved with. Yes, scandals have reached the public, and people have been charged. Around this time, by the way. Now, in addition to making mistaking audio tapes for picture files on the CD included with the state's response to discovery, and I was in jail for this whole time. I did not have a bond. My bond was revoked. I was sitting in jail. It was initially for seven months. Is it, in addition to mistaking audio for a picture on the CD included with the state's discovery, the constant neglect and refusal of action strategies which were agreed upon prior to hiring him as counsel, such as bond reduction, the review and pursuant of additional evidence and exculpatory evidence to review, and several other misrepresentations or otherwise false statements, the foregoing also directs, relates, and demonstrates the lack of communication, ineffective faulty advice, and the ineffective assistance of counsel from... Judge, blah, 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 because I hired a judge, yes, like an idiot. But it was a small town, and my personal friend lawyer was getting fucking stonewalled. So I tried to hire someone local who talked a good line, and then tried to feed me to these bad assholes. And what happened was at the last moment, after they had convinced me upon his advice to just plead guilty to prevent my mom from being charged with a conspiracy that she wasn't even guilty of... He tried to extort money out of me to withdraw the plea. And I had already been talking to my own personal lawyer friend, prepared the draft, and then stood up in court, put it all in blast myself. Now, what he filed was, comes now block counsel for Gray, and hereby respectfully moves this court for an order to allow him to withdraw his attorney's record. As grounds for this motion, counsel would submit that the client, which was me, Gray, has expressed and alleged that counsel has represented him in an unethical manner to such degree that a conflict now exists between attorney and client. Yes, there was a conflict, and yes, I did. And guess what? On the day that I was to be sentenced... On the day that I was to be sentenced, 
He allowed me to fire my counsel, represent myself, put me out on bond, and withdraw my guilty plea. Because I did have a case. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> once it came to actually argue my case, Although I knew some law and had studied rapidly, I did not understand due process or how to introduce evidence and so on and so forth, and lost it miserably. It was embarrassing. Side note, I was there when they were sentencing my co-defendant, who had just had a daughter with the senator's granddaughter. And they were laughing. They sat next to his family and were laughing and she was being sentenced. And I acted like I had a cough. <coughs> and I spit. <coughs> and I acted like I was coughing on the back of the 23rd Judicial Drug Task Force head. <laughs> and he turned around and punched me, the head detective. And the supervisor put his arm around him. And said, oh, no, 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 no. And, then and I, I leaned up in between them. And I said, what are you putting your arm around them for? What are you? Uh. <laughs> and called them some names. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of how hard I was wilding back then, I'm literally hawking loogies on the drug task force, but they were laughing about someone being sentenced to prison that just had a child. And this is over marijuana. Fucking get real. At least as far as they knew it was over marijuana. Now, anyway, what happens to me here? Oh, you already know. I get caught the fuck up. And I end up actually just getting away with house arrest. So I'm on some extreme house arrest. Now, it's 2011, and some things start happening. I had never been off drugs before, and when I got put off house, when I got put on house arrest, I started thinking. This is November 12th, 2010. A friend writes, what's up, man? It's been a long time. How are things? I write, I can't complain living out east, working a lot. You? This was after I was originally arrested and put on house arrest. So, I hit served seven months, getting busted in 2009. Now it's November 12th, I had put on house arrest for a little while, and someone random is messaging me. Most people, I was hot, you gotta understand, most people weren't contacting me, they didn't know what the fuck. Plus, there had been a lot of violence and other things that had happened leading up to this. So, he writes, same, just been working, trying to stay out of trouble. Glad to know you made it through all that BS. We should get together sometime. I still don't even know what really happened with all that. And I write, yeah, I just got put out on house arrest October 28th, because I was locked up and from when I got busted at the beginning of 2009 until then. But we should catch up sometime. A lot has happened. Ha. I'll be off house arrest with a 6 o'clock curfew in three months or so as well. A 6 o'clock curfew. Okay, so that was in three months. That's November 12th. Three months should have been February. It's May 2011, May 6th. I wrote, I've sent you an email. Help me help you help people. Dude, go read that note. Last one sucked. Now it's understandable. My whole family helped write it. Crazy shit ever, dude. I was about to say, I did, but couldn't understand it. Couldn't understand it? The new one or last one? I was flustered when I remembered. It's easily understandable now. So what's going on? Did you read the whole thing and look at the reference pages Then the last one that I did on Judaism and I didn't put it on there? Let you tell me what you think. It is all fact. This is me, my family. This is me. This is our collective experience of my story. It's hard to take it all in. I don't have time to read all the links. That's fine. So you guys were tortured? Yes, horribly. It's okay now, kind of. There's more to it, man. Please, just send it to everyone on your list. 
Please, for my family. They might be trying to get us. I'm not kidding. I know I sound crazy. You know I'm not about this shit. I'm still on house arrest, chilling right now, off work, lol. Not really chilling, just started to remember when I got weird messages and pictures on my phone from unresponsive number. Okay, so what the fuck is going on? That's right, some weird shit started to happen. I'd get arrested for all this shit, get off drugs for the first time, start thinking. Start remembering some shit. Shit gets fucking weird. Then I get some messages on my phone. Some pictures that I don't want to describe to people. That triggered me to be specific pictures. Some messages, some voice messages. And then lists of numbers and people. And I started to think back to my childhood when this happened. And again, I had sent this person a message and they wrote, If that's true, that's fucked up. But you need to better represent your story because people won't believe what I read. Because I was sending a jumbled mess of shit. When I remembered what I had went through, it was extremely hard to articulate. Imagine someone that's been locked in some sort of bunker, you know, traffic, someone like that, you know, freaking out. And then they get free. They're running out, help, help, this guy kept us down here, blah, 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 blah. You know, these motherfuckers are going to seem crazy as shit. But what do you expect when someone comes fresh out of some trauma? So I was trying to tell people a lot, but I didn't quite understand it yet and how it tied in with everything. And it sounded crazy. But the people that know me knew I fucking handle business and know how competent I am. So they were obviously trying to understand and talk to me about it because I'm not the type of guy to just go crazy and make up some shit. Uh, when I'm talking about I was handling business, I had a fucking enterprise, like we said. I was known to be competent. I was known to handle business. I was also had a good heart and helped a lot of people that were close to me. But I would crush my enemies. So they want them. Well, you know I don't call police. I know I'm not the best, but the thing is I don't care about the torture. Just look at the dates and the scriptures and the eclipse trajectory and then passes directly over my place and when my family blacked out and they mimicked the ritual. So what the fuck am I talking about? Well, things were going on and I was confused and I was drugged talking gibberish because as soon as I started to remember this shit, bad things happened and we'll get to that. He wrote, I don't understand the astronomy part of it. What is the significance? And I realized you don't see what I had sent him. Because now we will get to that. Oh my god. So, that was 2011. What ensued from there was not good for me. What happened was, I had remembered all of a sudden, when I was not on drugs or anything, I thought back to my childhood. And instantly, go! Oh, I remembered what the fuck happened when we were in New York. And I contacted my mother, contacted my sister, contacted everybody in my family. And they all had something to say. And some of them said, we tried to talk to you about this, but you told us to shut up because I was so fucked up and in the streets and successful and going on some other shit. I couldn't even fucking hear it. I couldn't even protect my mother being trafficked. When I was a teenager and I was getting abused. You think I want to hear about the shit of military intelligence? Is fucking using you as an asset? What the fuck? It was so fucking stressful. And then obviously I was tied in it. I just, so I fucking repelled it when they had been trying to tell me about it. And then, obviously, I said, oh shit. I said, well, we've got to move forward with this. I was still on house arrest, but I called the FBI in several places. Long story short, I got violated on my house arrest, and they claimed I failed a drug test. They were waiting to arrest me when I came to one place and said I failed my last drug test. However, 
Since I was in so much trouble in so many counties, I didn't only have house arrest in this one county that I reported to. I was also on probation in two other counties, and I had a total of 12 or 13, sometimes even if, depending how the dates fell, 14 fucking visits in one month. So what happened was, I had a probation in one county directly before this one county I reported to where they're claiming I failed a drug test, and then one county after, on the same day. So I had passed drug tests before and after. So either they were lying or is a false positive. But then when they were supposed to supply it, they didn't have it. So they said, look, and what happened was I had a friend whose father was a 33rd Mason and Shriner and a Royal Jester. A lot more than that. And he represented me and I said, oh, thank God he's coming in. I know I got this fucking thank God. Whew. He gets in there and said, hey. You're going to have to eat a little crow. What the fuck are you talking about? And he said, look, he said, you're in here, you know, here's what they want. He said, they realized you didn't fail a drug test. They say you're being unruly. They're going to file a new one. You're on a few years house arrest and probation and community corrections. And you're in three different counties. So we can consolidate it all to one. He said, they don't want you trying to sue them for this and that because there was the, still the whole case about them bringing my mother into it and coercing me and then just a bunch of bullshit. And then obviously claiming that I had failed a drug test. And there had been a few successful civilian lawsuits in that area already because it was a corrupt fucking little town system. And he said, look, we can just kick you out. Um, since you're already in, what it's going to be is you're going to be on the BOPP, the Board of Probation and Parole, just out of Davidson County, which was Nashville, which was the most lenient. Because these little counties really fuck you up. These big counties, they don't have time for it. The cities, you really, the time, you'll get like double. They'll whip you out. You're more likely to get probation and time, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, what the fuck? And he was basically like, look, man, we can fight this, but you're probably going to get fucked. And he's like, or you can take this. You're going to be out. You fucking, you won't even get drug tests. I said, fuck it, whatever, fucking sign me up. Just give me this probation and we'll get out of here. My family's there. The judge says, all right, as soon as the paperwork comes back, set them free. Guess who gets sent to prison in maximum security solitary confinement in a seven by nine for weeks without even a pencil or a book, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Moving forward... Now, 10-14-2012, I was just released. So, I served from the beginning of 2009 to the end of October, about a little bit over seven, maybe eight months in 2009. Then I serve, I go back in in 2010. Through 2011, 2012, 10, 14, 2012, I am out of prison because what happened was I never got released. I flattened my sentence. <laughs> and eventually got released when my sentence was up, which was three years total. So if you do the math, I had to serve it about day for day, and it was a struggle to even get released. And there's more that we're going to find out. So, someone writes me, 10, 14, 2012, same old shit, just moved to Ridge Lake, you gotta come kick it, my man, check out the new pad, my number's blah, 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 holler at me, broski. So it sounds like you got the raw end on charge, but it could be way worse, I'm glad you're free, homie, P.S., I know the truth behind all that shit, I've got scars and implants, oh, this is me, because I figured out everything when I was locked in solitary, by the way. So he wrote, same old shit, just moved to Ridge Lake, got to come by and kick it, blah, blah, blah. I wrote, sound like you got the raw end of charge, because he also got a charge, because obviously I deal with people. I said, but could be way worse. He's contacting me because people who got charges aren't scared. People who haven't got charges don't want anything to do with me. You better believe that. So 
I wrote, P.S. I know the truth behind all that shit. I have scars and implants. I was a government experiment, and so was family. Included Church of Satan and UFO. Believe it or not, it was the Monarch Program. Look it up. The Manchurian Candidate. I can show you how to f at least focus G or G or G and all sorts of shit. And he's basically like, fucking I do. That's crazy. Definitely come hang out. He said, glad you found a light in there. <laughs> this is the shit. This is the shit. This is fucking ridiculous. I can't believe for it. Like, it's about to get more serious. It's 2012 going into 2013. So basically, look. What happened was, I remembered the shit. I remembered the shit. This is what you got to realize. I got put on house arrest since I wasn't doing drugs. I thought to my childhood to remember this shit. Try to report it to the FBI and more, then all of a sudden it was mysteriously violated my probation for some bullshit, took a deal, got the deal, then instead of getting released, I was sent to maximum security for some reason, prison, and all this shit, and served out my whole sentence. Didn't know what the fuck to think. Eventually just gave up. Couldn't even get any paperwork or anything. Just fucking, just did it. Then you saw what was happening when I was released. I started telling people, hey, I was a government experiment and all that. When I was in solitary, it gave me really time to face shit. And I thought about it. I dealt with it. I felt safer than ever. And I became prepared. And I really started to realize what I was dealing with. In 2013, this is the end of 2013 because I still took some time to prepare. Because when I got out, I had to get some money. I had to get some bases. had to build up. I had to... Live a little, just in case if it didn't go good for me. <laughs> so in 12-6-2013, saving people. This is what I'm writing. I know a lot of places and people to look into. What method of action do you suggest? A basic understanding of a few subjects would help gain a better understanding of my story. Mind control, dissociative identity disorder, MK Ultra artichoke monarch. Satanic Royalty, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Montauk, Einstein's Theory of Relativity, Illuminati, Hidden Hand, Luciferian, Ritual Abuse, General Satanic, Use of Mind Control, the relation to any government operations. I'm telling my story as is. Some of the things I experienced were while under extreme duress, and I acknowledge the possibility of some memories being unreliable. For example, if you show advanced technology to a child, it would be easy to trick them into believing that it was magic in nature, or of alien origin. Furthermore, the technology could be made to appear more miraculous than it already was with the aid of drugs or hypnosis. Usually, it was a combination of all the above and then some. But some things can't be manipulated. Why is this so important to me? From the poor boy who goes through satanic ritual abuse and government mind control conditioning to the 12 year old girl dressing like a slut giving blowjobs to a line of guys in the bathroom at school while listening to the latest pop star sing about it to save victims who are actually sacrificed to save a poor boy's friend who won't make it through government conditioning to save that poor girl's daughter from the same abuse at the hands of her did mother in addition the act of suppression of new Clean your power sources and technology by the elite through the military industrial complex has led to unnecessary catastrophes an overall degraded and unstable environment. A worldwide power system is sure to self destruct over long term from natural disasters alone. Look at the nuclear plant track records. How many do we have? We don't seem to be experts at containment and cleanup either. Let's not even talk about the food. There are many survivors reaching out, healing themselves and others. They have my full support and are in my prayers. My heart goes out to them, and I invite them to network with me. I have reached out a lot with little feedback so far, but I feel that is due to my initial state of shock from rapid upheaval of memories and feelings. I'm all over the place and hard to deal with. Maybe that and a combination of everyone involved already having their hands full. So what's going on here? So what's going on? I've woken up from mind control. And while sitting in solitary... I healed myself and remembered everything. I truly felt safe. It all came flooding back. It was horrible. I dealt with it, and I started planning on how I can make this right in the world and dedicated my life to it.
by then I'm telling my story. I was kept secluded my whole life, my whole childhood under the guise of being a poor Jehovah's Witnesses in order to be better suited for eyes and manipulated while enrolled in a program that in many ways was similar to MK Ultra, Project Monarch, etc. This program was secretly funded and ran, at least behind the scenes, by some very horrible people. They used the guise of national security, etc. to justify unethical conditioning, torture, to get funding. They used the end product to promote their own agenda. To promote their own agenda, which is not in the best interest of the people. Trust in me. Basically, intelligence agencies and affiliates use top-of-the-line methods to turn me into a very interesting type of sleeper, mind-controlled super spy, similar to the Manchurian candidates. Again, this is the end of 2013 that I'm writing this. The elite rulers behind all this funding and shot-calling try to use my body. Oh, no. Look, now I'm going off the deep end. Because you got to understand, these motherfuckers did some fucked up shit. And I'm still sounding fucked up. This is too much. But I go into talking about DARPA, etc., etc. Project Artichoke, MK Ultra, Dissociative Identity Disorder, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, formerly Advanced Research Projects Agency, Montauk Projects, and then some other things. We're going to keep on going here. We're just going to rapid fire through these. Yes, and then I start giving them some background of the ancient religions, and we're on some ancient alien shit here. And there's reason for that. Here, 12-9-2013, DID and ritual abuse concerns in Nashville. I came into the office today. It's not easy for someone like me to reach out. In fact, it can be quite hazardous. Anyways, not surprised at not being able to receive treatment, but the main point was to spend my own money to make sure whoever you have dealing with DID was informed of techniques in local areas, and possibly people, depending on how the talk went. There are plenty of places to go from there. Of course, I am also looking for the right type of help, but I am far ahead of the game, and I am not restricted by the fears that so many survivors face. I am willing to correspond via email, however, I will need some form of acknowledgement at least. And this was a continuance of a conversation, because what I was doing, what I instantly started doing was hitting the ground running and networking with therapists. Now, very briefly, do you remember... Do you remember what I said the blueprint was? Because what the blueprint was... People are alleging that they were people involved in conducting people across the country. It is also important to understand that mind control techniques and follow-ups into adulthood may have been used to intimidate these particular research subjects into not talking about their victimization in government research. As a therapist for the past 22 years, I have specialized in treating victims and perpetrators of trauma and their families. When word got out that I was appearing at this hearing, nearly 40 therapists across the country, and I had about a week and a half to prepare. 40 in a week and a half. contacted me to talk about clients who had reported being subjects in radiation and mind control experiments. The consistency of people's stories about the purpose of the mind control and pain induction techniques such as electric shock, use of hallucinogens, sensory... You get it. Again. So, with the trauma therapist they network, guess what I fucking started doing? Once I woke up, realized I was fucking mind controlled. Remember my childhood. Remember my grandfather being involved with black budget UAP projects. Yeah, I was fucking over it. I'm talking about the advanced technology. And I'm networking with all the therapists to gather information. And I was also visiting places locally. Now... I was sending 12 13 2013 stop the sexualization of our children here's my plea someone wrote to me I'm sorry about bloom on the bright side they left the group I've seen them attack more than a couple members blah 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 I'm in 
survivor communities. Okay, here's my plea to survivors, therapists, and any other supporter to help gather data, classify it, so we can get a database of abusers and locations where it's taking place to stop it. To use our rights, such as free speech, to warn others when there is insufficient evidence for immediate legal action. Please keep it civil. Please do not block me, then slander my name and spread information while I can't see. Because I was having people accuse my activity of being dangerous and of going above and beyond. Is that the problem, though? Would that ever be the problem? I don't think I'm making a problem. I think the people that are programming and torturing children are the problem. I think you should agree. Attention therapeutic community. If you work with people who are DID, MPD, survivors of a ritual abuse or mind control, you most likely fit in one of two categories. One, you are genuinely trying to help your client. Two, you are working against your client in some fashion, intentionally or unintentionally. There are active misinformation campaigns aimed at the DID and ritual abuse community. False memory syndrome had already passed, but was not yet disbanded, so on and so forth. There are active misinformation campaigns aimed at the DID and ritual abuse community. Even deliberate acts of sabotage that have resulted in serious blows to professional careers. Ironically, you also have the problem of some specialists being DID themselves, directly reporting and working for culprits themselves. Yes, this is an issue. I don't think there should be too many that fall in between, seeing as how you have to have some serious motivation to deal with DID clients. Motivation that I feel would not come from the usual amount you earn for your time. What I mean is, you either extremely care so you would deal with these people, because you can't get paid enough to deal with this sort of charm. It's fucked. Or, you're complicit. And there are many that are complicit. Specifically, for example, signed up under the ISSTD just to get in clients. They can either lull into complacency or reroute back into the network. I will say, however, that I feel many of you may just be going in a circle and not making any real process. Stabilization is only so much. You need to heal someone. Stabilizing is not a way to get quality of life. You need to release this trauma. Many of you are going to circle not making any real progress, wasting resources, time, and money. I hope all of you have a complex understanding of how different types of programming are related to the time period and level in hierarchy, because there are different types of programming depending on if it is someone low level, a sleeper, if it's someone they're going to use as a patsy and burn out in a false flag, or if it is something else. You have to know what is in there to dismantle it. Even if you know how to find out from the client, there is a large chance you are being led on a witch hunt. Bad analogy, I know. I'm hilarious. That was set up by the culprits to aim you towards wasting time. Just because what the client says is there is there does not necessarily mean you can do anything worthwhile with it. I have a shell, or an invisible mask front personality. I was used as an output by many other alters, while not even knowing what was them outputting. Just thought I was being goofy, talking shit, even playing lying. I thought the different names and dressing habits were to protect me from having legal hiccups in my unsavory activities. Nope, turns out they were alters. Having a main mass personality is not to say that my alters don't also sometimes assume full control and leave me amnesic, though I am getting closer and closer to full integration where that will no longer be a problem. This type of thing can be found out on the long way the hard way, or you could know to check for it ahead of time. Now take that time you saved and try to save a similar amount of time on each step along the way. Everyone is different, but there are just certain things to look for and certain ways to handle them. Especially when you know what programming technology was available when and at what level was used so you can treat your client accordingly. Certain ways are superior when dealing with this. You need real information. I've talked to way too many who just don't know or have been fed misinformation about the whole issue. Don't get me wrong. You are certain to know lots about this that I don't. I hope. Which, by the way, they fucking didn't. But bottom line is that without consulting with someone like me, careful and good luck. Or getting in deep enough in a very high level client, again, careful and good luck. You will not be privy to some very valuable information. 
I hope the following type of information is being shared. I have some to share myself as far as locations for when to be cautious of in Nashville. Places not to send one's child, for instance. People breaking free, or at least key people that are further people breaking free from the cult. Deserve to know what schools are implementing programming methods. I was going to school at Queensbury Elementary in Warren County, New York. I was in second grade gifted class. Blah, 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 blah. Hooked up to the DARPA machine. They would play different videos in each eye, different audio in each ear, variably adjusting speed, color, sound, switching size, and electronically stimulating. Felt like shocking eye. Horrific sensory overload. As long as they had a few key employees, it was obviously no problem. I'm just one of many four, seven, four to talk about this issue. And we talked about how it's easy for them to infiltrate a school and secure an area for this to happen. We can't let this type of thing go on. What if your child had been selected for the program? I wasn't the only one. How often do you visit their school? Under what circumstances? Was it a controlled visit where you just check or do you pop into the classroom or do you have to check in? Different types of schools have different types of security levels and protocols. It could be very hard to catch them red-handed at some, which is why if we can't stop it completely, immediately, with legal action, then we really need to have a better system of protecting the children from this. We must be proactive with this vital information. I understand the reliability and confidentiality issues, but if 20 people identify the same place in the leaks, who is to say 21st didn't step forward? Because the therapists were already under attack with a false memory syndrome and so on and so forth, and it's very delicate grounds. And also, you do not want to betray a client either, to be fair. Now, this would be betray breaking your client's trust, so as an alternative, encourage those who are strong enough to network with other survivors, victims, defectors, and people of like mind. Corruption is everywhere, and we must unite to stand against it. You understand. So essentially what I was saying, we need to share our information to better address this. I know you can't just steal your client's information and pass that along, I understand. But if you have stable, strong clients, let's network and share our information. You understand? Data to collect. Number and percent of the therapist's clients that are DID, MPD, racially abused, or mind-controlled. Age groups, broken down in whatever ranges. Any suggestive evidence, for example, a huge scar on a client's head, such as... Uh -huh, claiming to have a brain implant. No medical record, but the scar certainly suggests something happened. Classify common alters, programs, demons, so we can get into some of this, y'all. Don't discount this shit. Purposes, needs, and methods of inter-system communication, forms of abuse and programming, marks, scars, moles, and many of these programmers have fucked up trademarks, such as cutting off one side of labia on female, for a variety of reasons. Fucking disgusting. Disgusting that they do that. Culprits, locations, areas lived previously, employment, education, birth dates, other astrological matches, rituals, dates of travel, miscellaneous experiences. I go more into this in other areas. I know this is no context. Any other form of corroborating evidence. If you have a few common culprits, locations, methods, structure of programming, how does this relate to the age group of the client sharing this? Do you see a common theme for time periods? Common theme for type of person? Male, female, muscular, overweight, etc.? Perhaps in relation to their employment or net worth? Looking for common denominators here. Patterns. Nothing is coincidence. This is an intelligent plan with highly motivated, well-funded, powerful people carrying it out. To be clear, we need to have a database, cross-referenceable, with number of allegations, dates of allegations, locations, etc., as well as the database for the survivors themselves, so we can cross-reference the external and internal data. With a large enough database of survivors, certain trends will be obvious. That's it. You understand? You think I'm fucking around? You saw what they did in 95. They gathered. And what did I ask to do to gather again? That was a little bit wordy. I owned that over time. And what I ended up doing, again, I think therapists could lose their licenses by violating patient confidentiality, responding to requests. 
And a lot of people felt like that. And fair enough. I did address that, but fair enough. When I'm writing, this is at 1231, the last day of 2013. And I start writing. About my implant from Semitech under DARPA and the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering, Injections, all this, the mortician, seal stop swimming at Gurney Lane, where I got my advanced swimming lessons as a child, was called Gurney Lane, how appropriate. And the gifted and talented of the aviation, Miss Quebec, the Puerto Rican who was under UN Cameron. From Silva Method, different training, monarch, many things. And we can go into some of this other later, because let me tell you, there is still a large part of this that I was fucked up about. And it goes into the original MK Ultra methods, if you remember, from part two to where they experimented with different things to discredit you and make you irrational. So while I was stating very real things, there was also some things I was confused about. And there was also some things that are very confusing because some weird shit is involved with this. You see. So, continuing on. Now we're into 2014. By 2014, I've really became well collected. Now, I reach out to one of my friends, one of my childhood friends, because I've seen his mom's boyfriend or her old stepdad was the manager of Crazy Horse the night shit went down. I said, yo, Holmes, this is January 3rd, 2014. I said, yo, Holmes, hey, I gotta ask you something. Remember, blah, 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 blah. Was he in the Navy or something? His name was Troy. So either way, I think he had been working at Pure Gold Crazy Horse as part of an operation I was working with. Turns out the scar in my head is no bullshit like a remote control implant. And they literally trained me since birth. Most of my childhood was in the mortician's basement. I was a fucking assassin with split personality that made on purpose. I'm positive of all this, but it's hard to be 100% sure of his face. That night I got the DY, which was the night that I woke up in the trauma unit and I showed you up and went over that. Said so I wasn't even at my car and I was planning to stay in a hotel. I was riding with the head of TBI's son. Dude, I was even set up when I got busted. I know I was there. But it was blah, 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 blah. Again, Senator Douglas Henry, who was on his last term and being blackmailed with evidence, JCC in a military tent learning. I've been scared to mention this. How's that for fucking how you doing? Happy New Year, bro. Wow. <laughs> he said, Troy was in the Marines. What are you saying he had to do with? Anything you had to do with? You saying that you were used to gather info on which they used to blackmail that senator? What the fuck? Have you had any x-rays of what's in your head yet? He said, I got an abnormal brain MRI, which I showed you briefly at the beginning in part one. So my x-rays, blah, 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 don't want to show you. He and other agents tried to terminate me on January 23rd, 2008. It was actually 22nd, but... That GUI crash, that wasn't just me being stupid, which was considering my history sounds doubtful, but I wasn't even at my car that night. It was six years ago. I've been in prison since, you know? I'm not just hung up on not being able to face a DUI. They actually found a roofie in my blood work. Yes, they found real hypno. Yes, remember, blah, 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 blah. I went to Pure Gold Crazy Horse. I've been causing problems for the organization, and they apparently made a call to terminate my services. Really, I was going to fuck them up, but I wasn't quite telling him this. Anyways, the play to send me on a mission and bring my gun so they could fuck me up so I didn't die when the car crashed. And then they tried to fucking stab the shit out of me. These stupid bitches. They're, ugh, y'all don't even move. So let me go there. 
And then I said, you know, I didn't realize it was him. He didn't go by Troy. He was a manager and a bouncer at Pure Gold and CIA Operations Headquarters, not surprisingly. After that, I didn't want to kill people, and I was punished. My assignment was to do something inside prison, because when I went to prison, I was also still given assignments. I was still a mind control asset. That's what you have to understand. This shit's fucked up, and I didn't realize every single level of this, because they hit you with some crazy fucking technology and drugs and all sorts of shit, and it, like, literally gets you like a fucking robot. It's fucked. I mean, and this is like very much less people that they specifically brainwash in a long term. Like, I'm, they had unlimited access to me. Like, most people didn't go through as extreme as me. In, in the program I was in, I was literally one of 10,000. You understand? Anyways. So sorry to drop that on you. It seems crazy. He said, it does seem crazy. Hard for me to follow and piece together. Wish I know how to talk to you about it, but I don't understand it as a whole. I still remember when you first talked to me about it years ago. And I can't read it. I do not at all think you're making it up. I've known you since fourth grade and realized I don't know a fraction of your life of what you've been through. I said, shit, how long ago was that? I have no memory of that. This was right before I got locked up after I flipped. You mean like within two and a half years or before? Before that. It was like 2011, I think. I said, damn, for real? I didn't say anything about anyone? Blank was a handler. I remember when he got you to sign that thing. Oh, shit. Yeah, because... My old handler had actually got him to sign some papers over something I got into. Something that day, too. I know it seemed like I was just fucked up, and I was, but that was the cover part. My split personality, blah, 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 gets you to sign any over legal responsibility, remember? He said, hey, what was, what was, blah, blah, our info? I know you just don't like police or anything, but I just want to, I remember, boom, that I signed was, boom. That's about it, that's about it. Anyway. Now I'm messaging someone else. I'm saying, hey, I'm recovering data from Boop. My split personality went rogue long before I even realized what was happening. I was drugged up and rich and wild, full speed ahead with tunnel vision. Now I'm sober and switched to good. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is my intelligence contact. I said, blah, 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 Langley, do you have an email? I got supporting info to pass to your FBI friends, including NSA numbers and blah, 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 clearance, which is uh, blah, blah, blah. So get to the damn point, I don't have time, like you. I have a good article, which is way too big for this platform, and I have documents. Er, edit. I will not boop, boop, boop clearance, because I am not breaking the law, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but I will pass list of data and numbers. Now, I was reaching out several places with all this information. And some places claim they're threatened, attacked, other things. Here's what one claimed. To low down on this, and others may come as an entire surprise to you, as you're very aware, to your immense credit, you are very probably carrying with you or embodying Trojan horses of some form. And as a natural consequence of that, you'd not necessarily be fully aware or allowed to be fully aware of all the factors involved. Oh, they thought I was just a bitch and didn't really snap out of it and I fucked everyone up. I get it. I understand. I'll try not to be salty. None of this in any way is a slight on your own determination and courage to do the right thing, but there are good reasons to suspect that your presence and interaction on the forum is having a harmful effect on some members and possibly in some way on the forum itself. You understand full well, of course, that the prime responsibility of blah, 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 because this is a private forum, extremely sensitive to the kinds of material you've been sharing. Knowing or unknowingly, trigger words and phrases have been included in your post. This is one factor in the problem. There's very good reason to suspect that you're unwittingly being used. Okay, so now I'm unwittingly being used when I'm reaching out to places to help them and to have for help and to gather information and intelligence. Because guess what? I'm taking this shit head on. You think I'm fucking playing? Shit. You don't even want to see my <laughs> You don't even want to see the pile. Look, it's fucked. So, just this, this whole thing is protected. Look, so what I did was I went to psychologytoday.com or whatever the fuck it was and all the psychology websites and sent my plea to network data after cleaning it up a little bit to every single dissociative trauma therapist and trauma therapist and then a few miscellaneous other ones. Every single one in the U.S. Then I sent to many outside, every single one in the ISSTD, many things. I started reaching out and networking everywhere. They would all sorts of shit. And I said, look, show them the video in 95. Show them, hey, look, we need to start putting this together because nowhere else is doing anything. Here's what I'm doing. I showed them some other stuff. I can't show y'all everything, obviously. And people got on fucking board. Oh, boy, we're off to the fucking races.
That's right, you stupid fucking bitch motherfuckers out there. I went right for it. Look. Okay, I see what the game is. Let's get the names. Let's find who everybody's naming. And then what do we do? We follow up. We call that actionable intel. Look, if ten people blindly corroborate the same person, fuck, if two or three, it's already on the radar. If ten, get the fuck out of here. Ten? You already know. Now, February 2nd, 2014. Because I didn't... I've mentioned some of this, but there's so much of this, and I'm trying to breeze through this, and we're already hours fucking in, and I'm interrupting my own life. Right now, by the way, it is 6.33 a.m., and I have to be somewhere at 9 a.m., and I have not slept. Defecting rogue agent. Whistleblowing on UFO, unethical domestic intelligence operations, human trafficking, political officials. Read the whole story of my life, which has cost many theirs. I was raised as a Delta assassin in a clandestine umbrella program. Oracle of Death, a human avatar. 24 pages, plenty of pictures. This was scrubbed from the net, as was most of the information. Basically, what I have left I'm salvaging and showing you. And I'm collecting data now in private, so it does make sense to show some of this public. But you see, just now the UFO and Human trafficking is starting to get linked. I've been whistleblowing on this for nearly 10 years. And I have for over 10 years in reality, but this is just an email that I sent to someone since then. Yes, I'm up late doing this. This is how it goes, because I'm not fucking playing around. I'd already been released from prison after serving solitary confinement. Remember, on some bullshit. Now it's going to get really interesting, because, speaking of that, and I have to redact a lot of this because a lot of serious shit happened. People were killed over all this and more. So I write, maybe this more real estate article will pique your interest. Please do not share this publicly just yet, as this includes danger to those around me somewhat. Info on Tennessee Senator Douglas Henry sitting at the top of the Nashville SunTrust building and his relation to unethical domestic intelligence programs, ritual abuse, and human trafficking. Not to mention my bloop. Yes, I have bloop. Tell me. Why wasn't his name mentioned behind this legislation? January 22nd, 2014, eight states named to introduce legislation to keep the NSA out of their borders. Tennessee's newly introduced legislation packs the strongest punch yet. But guess who was voting against it? And why do you think? The bill known as the Tennessee Fourth Amendment Protection Act, State Senator Stacey Canfield and State Representative Andy Holt, are the Senate and House sponsors. Their bill is drafted and lobbied for by the 10th Amendment Center, a national think tank, which seeks to impede unconstitutional federal laws, regulations, and entities on the state level. This is done by first leaking data from various about corrupt politicians, especially politicians, really whoever to get their hands on. I have redacted too much to really show you the contents of this. But essentially, what I am showing them that being said, to my knowledge, Senator Douglas Henry is serving his last term and stepping down. To me, it is confirmed. Because I already knew from what had transpired that he would be stepping down. Blackmail I helped secure. Preschool programming. Someone was fired. And we need to look into certain people and how many child care positions they hold. Don't get me into the child abuse scandals. A covenant and Audrey Hale. And if the other school that was named was Nashville Christian or the International School, because there is a few in Nashville where they are programming, including St. Cecilia, MBA, the Jewish School on West End. I have a list of schools, etc. I need to secure the parental emails to warn the parents at least. I figuratively and unfortunately even literally crash and burn trying to reach out before. I need reliable, uncorrupt law enforcement contacts. I don't know quite the next move other than prayer. And here I am, evolving my game plan of devoting my life to helping people. And what I did was get those emails. And I would do at these programming sites. It's write a letter anonymously to all the parents acting as another parent who is concerned about their child being mistreated and mishandled, 
and hearing about other incidents at these locations. Locations that I was 100% sure there was problems happening at. And what this led was to many people coming forward, massive amounts of complaints, and people being fired from several places. Now, did this end the, in the program? Of course not. And I've been able to end the programs directly in many places, as have my associates. However, at schools, it can be hard to get to. And that is why we took this rather oddball tactic such as this. But that's about the only tactic I really can explain, because we have many, and I do need to keep them quiet. But we are taking any and every measure we can, being very creative and resourceful for the children. Believe that. Now I'm writing people February 15th, 2014. Look near, blah, 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 TN, Hunter's Lake, Hunter's Field, private airstrip for shady trafficking and drop drills. More black budget child, more black budget drills ran across the street and ring farm in mazes, cut into cornfields, also hunting. Just north of this is the experimental farm lake. You remember how I was discussing this earlier, and you see, by now, they fucked up when they sent me to prison, illegitimately. Because what happened when I was in solitary, I was safer than ever. I had nothing, nothing to read, nothing to write, anything. And I was stuck there with myself, and all I could look was in the figurative mirror. And I faced myself, and I faced the horrible things I had done, and I forgave myself. And I prayed to God. I prayed to God every day. The airstrip is bringing in some nasties. I'm trying to leave aside personal info and give you the straight dope here. Perhaps you know how uncorrupt officials to relay this info to. Either way, keep doing your thing, making a difference. This person I was reaching out to. It's getting interesting. So, when I remembered living at this airstrip that you're about to see here, I found out was set up in Pegasus, but I already knew it was operational for the 160th. I was operations manager at this airstrip from 2007 to the beginning of 2009. I was involved with response and recovery teams, as well as many other applications, and of course training of many infantry going into these black budget programs. Utilizing wolves for drills, and many things. And being the example that would set and even get funding in many cases. I reached out to someone who I knew was involved with the 160th. Howdy from a fella. Bumps here myself. As I had seen, this was a former whistleblower as well. Any direction for a data dump of child programming and drill sites, as well as backdoor into being pushed into designs? I've left a lot out. I'm in mean about a hundred fucking times deeper than I portrayed. I could never really get into it this deep. There's only so much to show. I'll talk about it. I'd be happy to answer some questions, but can talk about this on a much deeper level. But for now, I'm just breezing through the conversations that I have. Obviously, most conversations are not had in a recorded manner. And obviously, I would not usually show this sort of thing. But I am trying to show how genuine I am and strategies that I took in order to garner support. Because now that this is all going in the background, major things have already happened. Now I'm reaching out, and eventually aiming to scale this up, where everybody in the public comes together and does this at once, and cleans up the rest of this mess. So I'm looking for direction for a data dump of child programming sites. Remember, I left with a database of evidence. And yes, I made contact and was networking exponentially after that. Hello. <laughs> I said, hi, should I just stick my tip in first? My toe in a pool, you sick man. <laughs> not much support for someone like me. I don't get much done alone, although not completely alone. Rogue operative, me. MK Ultra type of deal. Racing Fort Meade, and then a mortician space with my sister's desensitization delta training. Yes, I know I didn't mention about Fort Meade, but that was a large aspect. Transhumanist experiment 
all the real good stuff. Hence, I'm more afraid of awkwardness than death, fruit than bullets. Yes, that's right. I had a reversal, and unfortunately, fruit makes me gag. Basically, I'm kind of a meat guy. And then every once in a while, I might have a drink and a smoke. Excuse me. So, trying to get some good info out in a PowerPoint fashion to some possibly non-corrupt context. Because I really had it together by now. There's so much you're not seeing. Only so much ever hits the fucking record. I could tell you, but I'm trying to kind of show what the fuck I got. We'll talk more, bro. You know how they embedded you. You need to be careful coming forward due to the internal conflicts you will experience. Sorry, I'm eating dinner and typing, haha. And by internal conflicts, I can walk through that, but they walk you through certain commands while stimulating a certain part of your brain and repeating messages into your brain and stimulating the Wernix area, the Wernix center of your brain, in order to reaffirm negative affirmation if you are to disclose information. And I can explain this and demystify it thoroughly, but anyways. I wrote, take your time. No Omega situation for me, which is describing what happens to people that are programmed to kill themselves when they start talking or remembering about this. I write, I am young but advanced. Observe my scar, brain surgery, six months old, before Fontenelle closer, Semitech implant, enhanced cognitive abilities, blah, blah, blah. Look, y'all, I don't try to talk about this shit, and it's a little bit weird. Okay, my family, and blah, 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 you know, I'm involved in people I shouldn't be. Okay, we're talking about Project Jehovah, Oppenheimer, Einstein, the Eclipse. Look, y'all, don't need to know about this. There's too much Dresden Codex. You're asking too much. This isn't, this is, we'll go into this some other time. Placebo is one hell of a drug, and even if it's not placebo, guess what? It's even fucking worse for them. I've been having complications as our family and other defectors overthrew our handlers, and the family's Omega programming went off across the board, except for mine, which was part of the reason that my grandfather was killed because he didn't want to put Omega programming in me once he found out what the people were really doing. He says, I ask you this is important for all of you. How long ago was that? Just take your time. Just reaching out. A lot of info documents are around for some at my eighth birthday. So, but there's a lot of BS out there. Mostly so. It's the internet. But I don't need documents. I have experience. People think they need them, so I reference suitable ones. I said, the wood documents, the service pertaining to Project Jehovah, have large relevance, though. I said, paper's not what you need. Deep programming will be critical. There are a number of trap doors that may cause you a great deal. I said, look, I work in the field still. I go to safe houses. I say so much. I say, you know, this is internet talk. I can only say so much. So, yeah, I'm worried, but I have established myself internally as much as I'm able. I said, I need a secure email list for known programming schools such as in Nashville, Tennessee, the Early Childhood Development Center, which was ran by certain senators. Deep. There is someone that will be here at the beginning of March. She can be of more assistance than me. I was only tasked to utilize your kind of talents and missions, but not of that early age. We transported and utilized the missions. I'm aware of your kind of programming and talents, however, not the scientific type. She is much more connected to the other side. Not so familiar with Doctor, she is. I said, nice. If you want to check out, zoom up on the farm across the street. Patterns for drills, the private airstrip. This was your field. To the north, experimental farm lake. I was operations manager overseeing all that and was just for fun type of shit. I was brainwashed, obviously. Corn maze patterns, to be clear. Scale model of TN with waterways. Any contacts you provide are much appreciated and for the good of the people. Hee <laughs> hee. Body farm for TN forensic cadaver analysis training is also deeply involved. Six feet. Oh, <laughs> punny. Lol, I can't help myself with the sick humor. Last thing to mention. Me, and my family, and my girlfriend kissing my cheek, all know and are aware of the risks involved. He says, we were based out of Fort Campbell flying into an airstrip outside of, so yes sir, that's right, right on the Hunter Field. Yes, sir, Hunter Lake. He said, we didn't do hate la lake landings unless we need to. He said, Hunter Field is next to the lake. So, yes, I lived. 
He said, we are in building mode for 160th black helicopters, which I found him through the 160th. He said, practice runs to many small strips on la- as they were goggle missions. One was called Ed Hunter Field. Ed Hunter Field. I said, my wolf for the drill, Ed Hunter Field. Black budget, how long ago was this? Long before 2008 when I was there. He said, 81, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I said, I wonder, either way, thanks for conversing. Yes, I can get blah, 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 Lincoln Town Car model. And then he goes to confirm, we're talking about this. You understand? Do you understand this? So, we have a 160th operative. We have a 160th operative that had blown the whistle and supplied documents against Bush, Clinton, so much more. Cocaine, laundered funds, assassinated special forces teams that were set up with a phony fucking cover story. So much. It's despicable. It's fucking despicable. So anyways, he had confirmed, yes, that airstrip I was living at was set up in the early 80s for the 160th, and that was through Pegasus. Again, the beginning of 2014, this is still February 19th, another doctor asking to share my information. I appreciate speaking with me concerning the conversation. They look forward to the information. We'll pass it on as they assist in any way they can. Again, I was reaching out nationwide. Here's someone else. Now, here's what happened already. <laughs> it was 2 2014. Now is June 14th, 2014. Here's someone that writes me. How are you, boy, man? Guess what happened? Guess what happened? I was arrested again. <laughs> so, we'll pick it back up and... After June 14th when I was arrested again.